Okay, so first of all, I have a lot of data here, and it's all a bit messy, and so I'm going to organise it to try and make it more usable. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to insert three blank columns up here. And then I'm going to go to the Info tab, and here I have a list of all of the compounds that were measured and for which I have data. But I know that each of these compounds was measured in four years, from 2013 to 2016, so I need each compound to be listed four times. And I'm going to do that by inserting a new column here, and I'm going to type a 1. And then I'm going to click and drag this all the way to the bottom. And then I'm going to click on this and I'm going to change it from copy cells to fill series. And now if I go to the bottom, it has gone all the way up to 75. So I'm going to highlight the whole of this and copy it. And then go down to the bottom and control V to paste. And I'm going to do that once twice and three times. Then I'm going to highlight all of this and I'm going to go to home and sort and I'm going to custom sort by column B values smallest to largest. And now you can see that I have each compound report repeated four times. Now if I go back up to the top I no longer need this column so I'm going to delete that and I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it into my data tab. And I know that I need a gap here for my column heading, so I'm going to shift that down one. And I'm going to call this compound. And I'm going to call this year. And here I'm going to type in my years, so 2013 to 2016. And then I'm going to use a formula to fill in the rest of the table. So I'm just going to click up here and press enter. And then I'm going to double click on this corner to fill in the rest of the table. So now I have each compound four times for each of the four years it was measured in. Then in this column here, I'm going to combine those with compound dash year. And I'm going to do this using the concatenate formula. I'm going to click on this. I'm going to type in comma, quotation marks, dash, quotation marks, comma. And I'm going to click on the year, close brackets, and enter. And then I'm going to double click on this. And now if I go down to the bottom of the table, I know that phenyl chloride wasn't measured in 2016, so that I know that this all matches up and my data is complete. Now if I go back up to the top here, and I'm going to press Alt D P to get up the old version of the pivot table. And then I'm going to select multiple consolidation ranges. And then I'm going to press next. And then I'm going to select I will create the page fields and next. And then I'm going to choose my range. So it's just going to be from the C column all the way across and all the way down. And then I'm going to add that, and I'm going to press next, and finish, and I've made my pivot table. Now I'm going to get rid of the columns and the rows, and I'm going to just double click on the total here. And whereas before I had all of the compounds and the years down the side, and then the sample numbers along the top, I now have all of them down the side in just three columns but uh, I want my compounds and my years to be separate. So I'm going to insert a new column here, and I'm going to highlight this and go to the Data tab and select Text to Columns. I'm going to delimit this, and instead of using Tab, I'm going to use Other and Dash. And then Next and Finish. I'm just going to press OK for this, because I know it doesn't matter. And now I have the compounds and the years separated out again. Now I'm just going to add in some column headings here. Compound, year, sample number, and concentration. 
Now I'm going to press Control A to highlight all of this and I'm going to insert pivot table and I'm going to create my second pivot table which will be the one that I'm actually going to use. So concentration goes into values, sample number goes into rows and compound and year goes into columns. Then I'm going to go to design and I'm removing subtotals and grand totals and as all of my counts are one I can go down to here and select value field settings and change it to average as there's only one value in each cell that I'm averaging. And now I'm just going to insert a bunch of blank rows and columns. Now I'm going to click back on the pivot table and I'm going to go to Analyze and Insert Slicer and I'm going to select Compound. Now if I make this big enough I should be able to see all of my compounds without having to use the scroll bar. If I increase the number of columns and I'll need some more space down here Increase it by one more. It's almost enough. There we go, that's all of them. Okay, now if I select any one of these, my pivot table would change to show just the information for that compound. And I can select any one of these I like. Now I can't make the chart that I want using a pivot table so I'm going to need to transfer this data across and I'm going to go back to my info tab and highlight my sample list and copy that and put it next to the pivot table. Then I'm also going to copy the years and in here I'm going to create an if Formula. So equals if this value is equal to zero, then I want it to become non-applicable. So the graph won't plot any zero values. And if it's not equal to zero, I just want to plot the value. And then I'm going to pull that across, double click to fill in all the way till the bottom. And now I have all of my data there, so I can start plotting this up. If I just highlight 2013 first of all, and go to insert, chart, scatter chart. Now I'm going to right click on this, select data, and if I edit that to make it 2013, we'll now add in the rest of the years. Enter, enter. Okay, if I just move this along a bit so I can get to the other two years. Go to select data again and add in 2015. And then finally 2016. And now I have a chart with all of my data on it. And now I'm going to move that up into the corner here and make it larger so it fills in the whole of the space. Now I'm going to format this a little bit. So if I go to home, and I'll change everything so it's black instead of gray and make it bold and make it size 14. Now if I edit the axes and I will make this zero so it doesn't move around and I will also make this 85 to get rid of the gap at the end. Now I am going to get rid of the labels and I'm also going to change the line so it is black instead of grey. 
And now if I select this one, and I will change the line on here as well. And on this one, I'm going to add in some tick marks on the outside. Now I want to add in some more features. Axis titles, chart title, legend, and I'm going to put my legend on the bottom. Now I don't want actually want that axis title. I'll just get rid of that. And the chart title will be equal whatever's in this cell. So it'll be the compound that I'm looking at. And I will make this bigger. Then I want this axis title to be whatever is in this cell here. And I will put my axis label in here. I need a formula to make that. So equals this compound and quotation mark space open brackets ppt close brackets quotation marks enter and now my axes label will be whatever the compound is plus the units ppt parts per trillion then I'm going to delete these and I will make these grid lines dashed so they don't stand out as much then I will make each of these markers bigger. I'll change it from 5 to 10 to make them stand out more. And I'll do that for every year. Okay, and then uh, finally, I will also get rid of the border on the graph so that it's just plain. Okay, and if I delete this, now I have the chart that I want, plus all of the buttons so that I can select any compound that I like. And if I click on a different compound, the axes will automatically change, and the label, and the title, and all of the data points. I can just pick whatever I like. Okay, and that is it.